Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our response of reading will be found in Matthew, the second chapter. Matthew, the second chapter. Got it, verse 1. And you got it, say it. Amen. So when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, King, behold, there came a wise man from east to Jerusalem. Saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen the star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Thank you. 
Robinson family uh, today. And those of you that are in the audience that are part of this family are in the balcony that are part of this family. Well, um, we also want to acknowledge that uh, Sister Connie Ferguson is here today.
Let church say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Give greetings to each of you who are here. We're thankful to our God for the privilege of coming together in worship. We ask that you would govern yourselves according to the announcements as well as pray for those who are sick and shut in. Uh, we're especially happy to have the Robinson family with us today. And the choir has been blessing us in a tremendous way. Why don't you give God some praise? This week?
Sister Priscilla Hill.
We have wedding anniversaries listed in the person of uh, Brother Ernest and Sister Gladys Evans. Also, Reverend and Sister Sam Samuel and Lynn Freeman. He told me, man, he's going to take you to Oklahoma for your wedding anniversary. I was going to pray for him because he told me I was going to gather. <laughs> At the place, remember he sees you also. <laughs> oh, anybody visiting has a wedding anniversary this month. Anybody visiting want to get married? <laughs>
a child of the skies with the angelic host for Christ.
Sister Crystal. Yeah. Our Lord's Gospel is recorded in John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verse 11, and Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. John 4. said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. So whence then hast thou that living water? <coughs> back it up, back it up, back it up. Let's do verse 10, y'all. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink. Uh -huh. Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Amen. If thou knewest the gift of God, uh -huh. look at somebody and say, Gift of God. Now uh -huh. turn to Matthew chapter 2. Brother <coughs> Potter just is my name, 18. Matthew chapter 2. I'm going to read 10 so I don't look too bad. First, I told you 10. Matthew chapter 2, verse 10. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child, look at somebody say young child, young child. <laughs> with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. Gold, uh -huh. and frankincense, uh -huh. and myrrh. Yeah. For a few minutes, I want to talk from the subject God's gift. Amen. God's Amen. gift. Amen. God's gift. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. We know what God gave to us. The question is, what are you giving to him? Christmas come humdrum for a lot of people. They, they don't get excited anymore. But we got everything. My question is, on your shopping list, that's just a minute, it's just a minute in church, y'all. My thing is, is that what did you get for Jesus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Your list, when you were considering buying Christmas gifts, what gift did you get for Jesus? Amen. A gift is something, the dictionary says, you give. <laughs> Not expecting anything in return. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah, Something you give. Uh huh. Not expecting anything in return. Amen. That's pretty messed up. This. How many people give Christmas gifts 
only to receive Christmas gifts. And we'll get mad if they don't get what they expected. Like you're supposed to, like you're supposed to read their minds. What are you getting with Jesus? This whole thing about gift giving is really kind of all messed up. I mean, uh, it's supposed to be about bringing joy to people, making people feel better, feel happy. It's supposed to be a day of celebration and good times. But but what has it become? Hmm. You know, we, we, we got pretty messed up. It's pretty much commercialized. It's about sales. They care more about it. The day after Christmas, because the sales are supposed to be better. Amen. But you got things on sale, and they, the prices are reduced. And even this year, after they reduced the prices, they still aren't reduced. And they were saying they are upset with Biden because the economy is messed up. And you're saying he don't understand it because he talks about all the investment he's made, and he's done a lot. But the problem is, with all of his lowering prices, the prices are still higher now than they were before the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing how they always want to blame Biden for the economy, but then they keep raising the interest rate, which raises the prices of houses and everything else. And the credit card is going crazy, and everybody doing the blame game, and no one is enjoying Christmas. Come on now. Because we forgot what Christmas is all about. We never knew what Christmas is all about. Santa Claus. Don't get me started. Yeah. We, we, we think about a tree and we want the presents. And I want my gift under the tree. And the bigger the gift, the better it is. Good gifts call, come in small packages. And my thing is, have we really lost the whole essence of what it's supposed to be about? For God so loves the world that he gave. He gave. And that's, and that's what's true. It's more blessed to give than to receive. And we got a lot of folk who claim to be Christians, claim to be children of God, and yet know nothing about giving. We got selfish children. Don't blame the children. They're only being who they were taught to be. It's a selfish society. Nobody is concerned about anybody else. Everybody He's only concerned about themselves. They get mad if you cut them off because you cut me off. You slowing me down. All right, you get slowed down. Doesn't matter how you get mistreated. You can't mistreat me. And everybody is so selfish. We forgot about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me start. I'm talking about wrong worship. Wrong. Look at somebody say wrong worship. Wrong worship. Wrong worship. Seems like to me, if we are going to God's house, we ought to be ready to worship God. The Bible says those wise men came to the little boy and they worshiped him. Yes. That's the yes. clock. Yes. The clock makes them begin and again. Let's worship him. And it seems like to me, somewhere in Brooklyn, uh, giving God a gift ought to include worship somewhere in that. Yes. But it seems like to me, we, we come to church, quote, to worship. But the problem is so many people don't know what worship is. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> don't know what worship is. And, and so the Bible says these wise men, these foreigners, these foreigners came from a far land. It took them almost two years to find him. And, and, and yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'll make y'all repeat it. He said they found the young child. Uh -huh. You want to tell y'all that? That's right. I didn't make that up. It's in the book. The young child. In other words, they didn't say they found the baby. They didn't say he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. He, they didn't say they found him in the manger. They found the young child. Yeah, yeah. He was almost two years old. In other words, when you see the wise men in the nativity scenes, it's wrong. It's not right. It's not. They were not there. They were not a part of that. Again, we celebrate stuff the wrong way, stuff we aren't supposed to supposedly celebrate. It. And they came, they came when they found him. These dedicated men, dedicated to finding this, this child. Uh -huh. 
They found him, the young child, yes, yes. in a house. Mm -hmm. Not in a state, but in a house. Yes, they found and when they and when they found him, the Bible declared, oh man, they were kind of excited. They were they were overjoyed. They 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 were excited to see him and being warned of God. Uh, they leave and go another way. But when they found him, look how they expressed themselves. They said, open up the, the treasures. <clears throat> now, when rich people traveled back in those days, they always had traveling money. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. They had traveling money. Not like y'all. They didn't use credit cards. They had traveling money. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and so they didn't know what expenses to expect. So they would bring their treasures with them. So that if they came across an expense, they would just take their treasure and find something. When they saw Jesus, the Bible said they worship him. And then it says, he said, hey, open up the treasure. Yeah. But this is a trap. Open up the treasure. Yeah, yeah. This is something we have unexpected. It's been open up the trip. When they yeah. saw him, yeah, they yeah, had this yeah. strong urge to give something to him. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Say, when they looked inside, that what they pulled out of their treasure is gold, uh -huh. frankincense, yeah. and myrrh. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty sharp gift. That's a pretty expensive gift. Yeah. They gave him those gifts. Question, yeah, yeah, question, yeah. question. What's the most important thing to you at Christmas? Mm -hmm. well, the well. gifts you receive are the people who give them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So go back, go back in your mind. Well, for some of y'all talk, so go back in your mind and tell me what is the most important gift that you receive in your lifetime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about it, think about it, cool man. If you're three years old, you ain't got that long. But some of y'all got a long way to go. Brother Dixon, I'm not going to call your name now. You're just not going When you said three, you had a lot of Christmases. What is the best gift you've ever had? Think about that. What's the best gift? And then the question I want to ask you. What makes that gift so important? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it the gift or who gave it? Come on. What's the best thing you ever received on Christmas? All right, all right. Why is it so valuable to you? Yeah, yeah. Right. And is it valuable to you because of the gift? Or because who gave it? The older you get, the more you realize the stuff is really not important. The stuff, most of it you can't even remember. All that money you spent on toys, those children forget about it in less than a year. The question is the really great gifts you receive had nothing to do with the stuff, but the time you spent. The time with the greatest gift was the love that you shared. The greatest gift was those experiences that you can't put a value on. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Gold, frankincense, and murder. What's valuable today is not all that valuable tomorrow when you're talking about stuff. That brand new car is no longer brand new. It really can't be brand new very long. One little accident and it, it's gone. Those beautiful clothes aren't beautiful because they're out of style. What's your greatest gift? Go, friends. And, and, and the disciples, when they came back and saw Jesus eating with that young lady, he had been wish, wor worshiping with her, witnessing to her. And he says, give me some water. And she says, why are you asking me for water? We don't even associate. You from one race, I'm from another. 
He said, if you knew who was asking you for water, you would turn that thing around and ask him to bless you with something. He says, I got some water that if you had it, you'll never thirst again. I got some living water. And she said, I want some of that stuff. That's the kind of stuff I want. I want some of that. And, and the Bible said she had a, a life transforming experience. And you know what? Sometimes God can be working right in your midst. And there are some demonic minds can come and look at it. And the first thing they start thinking is devilish stuff. <laughs> when the disciples got back, you know what they why are you talking to her? Why are we be talking to a woman? In public. Yeah. And then they might make a certain. You want some meat? You want some meat? They were going to buy meat because he was supposedly hungry. And when they got back, they saw it with the woman. But it wasn't when they saw the woman, they trying to interfere, trying to break it up, trying to make some change. Do you want some meat? And Jesus says, no. to find some meat and we went to all this trouble and come back and he told me you want the meat he said I got some meat that you know ooh I wish I had to this I have meat that you know not of I have meat you know what are you saying man? I'm saying sometimes we want to give Jesus stuff that he don't even want we want to give Jesus stuff he don't even need you're trying to give Jesus things that are not even valuable to him he was talking to us, talking about, well, you're always trying to give me lambs and, and, and you know, frankincense. You're always trying to give me scents and incense. You're always trying to give me all this stuff. He said, that stuff stinks. Wait a minute, Lord. That's the stuff you told us to bring to you. Those are the sacrifices you told us to give to you. What you mean they're unacceptable? What you mean they're stink? He said, they're stink because of your attitude. They stink because you don't have the right mind. They stink because you're going through the motion, but that's all it is. You're going through
You go to God's house and steal God's stuff to give it back to God. Wrong worship, wrong worship. That's wrong worship. I'm going to worship right. I don't give him what I think he wants. When I really want to bless God, I find out what blesses God. Only yeah. worship works. Yes, okay, preacher. You tell me what he don't want. What is it God wants? All right. <laughs> the Bible says, when those wise men came, mm -hmm. the first thing they did was worship. They, they open up their treasure and, and they take some of the most valuable things out of their treasure. They present them with valuable commodities. And, and the Bible says they had already given him his greatest gift when they saw him. They they worshipped him. The, he's a little boy. He's not even two years old. But there's something about his countenance. There's something about his, his essence. There's something about who he was that demand of them that they would worship him. They worship him. You know what God wants more than anything else in your country? He really don't want no new robes. He wants some worship. He don't need no new bussy uniforms. He needs some worship. He don't need y'all standing at the same time, clapping your hands on you. He wants real worship. He don't want you responding to somebody asking you to stand up, clap your hand, wave your hand. He wants some sincere worship. Worship that comes from the inside. Worship that emanates from the heart. He wants you to have the right attitude. God wants you to worship him. He wants you to worship him. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a way we know we We used to worship in these mountains. And then when you say, you worship, you know not what. Amen. 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 You worship, but you don't know what you worship. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're celebrating somebody's birthday and you don't even know whose birthday you're celebrating. Come on now. Yeah. You're celebrating Jesus' birthday at the wrong time of the year. Yeah, yeah. Wrong, yeah. wrong attitude, but you claim you're doing it for him. Oh, yeah, and then to really make it nice, make sure you don't use his name. Make sure you don't say Merry Christmas because somebody might think that's his mama's name. <laughs> so you say Happy Holiday because you want to be ecumenically correct. Do you really think God is pleased with your ecumenical concerns? Your ecumenical correctness? You're being in the proper posture. Do you really think God is really pleased with you going through more trouble not to insult homosexuals than you do with trying to elevate and lift his holy and righteous name? Do you really think God is pleased? Uh, we worship at our best when we worship in spirit. Come on here, somebody. Yeah, yeah. And in truth. God is a spirit. Uh -huh. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I worship God at my best when I do God's will. Yeah. That's what Jesus says. 
want some meat? No. I got some meat you don't know anything about. Thank you. Come meat. I have meat you don't know anything about. My meat yeah. is to do the will of my father. That's like that. If I do his will, that's all the meat I need. That's, that's what you need. I, I don't give a fat rat what you concerned. I don't really don't care how you get mad at me. My question is, are you seeking God's will? Are you really trying to live for God? Are you trying to please God? Are you trying to do the right things for God? That if I really want to celebrate his birthday, if I really want him to have a good day, I don't need to know what hands want. I really don't need to know what the deacons want. I really don't give a fat man about the business meeting. I want to know what is it God's will. Y'all pray for Mike because his daddy's going to lose it like that. <laughs> Wonderful and watchful worship. When you look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15, he talks about that gift. He talks about the unspeakable gift. Yeah. yeah. The unspeakable gift. Uh -huh. For God's love, we're going to get going. We got some who shall believe that they should not perish but have everlasting life. And Paul says, I've gotten the gift from God, but it's an unspeakable gift. Unspeakable. What do you mean by that? Unspeakable. It's like it's like it's it's a gift that you can't describe. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's a gift you can't express. There, there are no words that you can use to adequately give a decent description of the gift of God. It's it's unspeakable. It's unspeakable. This this wonderful gift uh, uh, is a gift that. That 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 really changes everything. It's it's wonderful because it pleases God. It pleases yes. God because it's in the will of God. This gift yeah. is the gift yeah. that keeps on giving. It keeps on giving. Yeah. 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 The gift that keeps on giving is the gift that keeps on giving. That He gave it to us, but He keeps giving us. See? Yeah. Yeah. He gave it. I got it last year, but He keeps on giving. It, yeah. it really yeah. work. Wait till the 25th. In fact, you can take the 25th off. It's going to be given on the 26th, the 27th, January, January, March. It keeps on giving over and over. It keeps on giving. It gives in the morning. It gives in the evening. It gives at night. It'll wake you up at 3 o'clock and it keeps on giving. It's the gift that keeps on giving. It's, it's a wonderful gift. He says, says I'm, I'm, I'm going, mm -hmm. but I'm coming back. Yeah. I came, uh -huh. but I'm coming back. Yeah. Seems like to me, Brother Jackson, that, that this gift has something to do with the fact he came and died on the cross yeah. for us when we couldn't die for ourselves. That's not all. Don't, don't get all caught up in the fact that I died. I want you to come back. I'm coming back. I wish I had a witness here. You don't have a reason to get, get sorry and sad. Don't, don't get all out of distraught. Don't, don't get all worried about the headlines. Don't allow the headlines to cause you to feel down and under. Don't let the newspaper mess up your head. Don't let prejudice and racism and the condition of our world cause you to throw in the towel. But Jesus said, I'm coming back. Yeah, I don't care. I don't care what the conditions are. I'm coming back. Don't, don't, don't be hopeless. Don't feel like there's no reason to keep on going. Christians ought not think about suicide because we got a brighter side. I wish I had somebody. I know somebody who can make life worth living. I know somebody who can turn my life around. I know somebody who's a king of kings and a lord of lords. Got in that Christmas service.
serve them. You got a joyous king. That's a king that was there. He wasn't two years old yet, but you got a jealous king. The jealous king was Herod. And Herod is so messed up because he don't want to give up his crown. He's trying to kill the king before the king becomes the king. He's trying to wipe out the king because he wants to hold on to it. You know, I wish I had somebody. Some of y'all are miserable because you want to hold on to what you have. You're trying to keep it. And all that is is making you miserable. You want to hold on to your money, but you're miserable. You want to hold on to your house, but you're miserable. Trying to hold on to your job, but you're miserable. You got to learn how to let that mess go. You don't put no bag on stuff. Just let it go. Say, did I learn not to try to hold on to my stuff?
hear this I'm a preacher. I'm looking for a church home. This is my good church. But even if you don't want to, you're not even Methodist. You can pray that God will lead you to the place where He wants you to be. So you can serve in a greater and a grander way. If you hear today, say, Brother Preacher, I'm going through a storm right now. I'm going through some stuff. I'm having problems, family problems. I'm having love problems. I'm having children problems. You know, I don't know what your situation is, what your circumstances are. But whatever your need is, you can bring it to the Lord. And we'll be more than happy to go to God on your behalf. Say, Brother Preacher, I'm in standing in my church and I love the Lord, everything is fine, but, but I want to pray for some lost people. I know somebody who's lost and I want to stand in their stead today and we'll ask the saints of God to pray for those who are on their way to hell and don't even realize it. That there are some folk who don't want to even accept Christ as being who he is. There's some folk who say that Jesus is an imposter and according to my Bible, if you don't accept Jesus, you don't have a chance. Well, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. Well, preacher, I want to stop being a catfish Christian. I stop being a catfish. I didn't know what catfish was, Brother Jackson. I was watching it. And, uh, when they said catfish Christmas, I think about it. was a good fried catfish. They wouldn't even talk about no catfish, man.
gracious to God, to Pastor Haynes, to the Bethany family, to our guests. Prayer is being requested for Nedlin and Regina Broadnax. They're also requesting prayer for their neighbor, Jacqueline Grace. Amen. Uh, Evan, uh, Yvette Brown, excuse me, is requesting prayer for her mother, Elizabeth Brown. Amen. And Sherry Harris requesting prayer for strength. Amen. Again, we are honored and humbled by all of those soliciting our prayers. And there are some who have prayers and prayer requests who did not uh, announce them or make them known. And the good news is God knows your heart, knows your needs. And so we're going to go to God right now on behalf of all of those requests. Well, actually, we're going to treat the leaders in this prayer. We want every heart to pray, every heart to pray. Right. 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 Church, say amen. 